Hi everybody, welcome back to another Bash tutorial. Today we're going to talk about how to read and write uh, basic text files. So a couple videos ago we talked about how you can create blank files uh, using the touch command, but blank files really aren't that useful. Um, they're only useful, I mean the whole point of a file is to store information, so we need to learn a way to store information in the files that we create. So let's start off by just creating a blank file. Most of the time this is kind of an optional step uh, because just writing a file will go ahead and create it for you. But just to be completely clear and everything, I'm going to use the touch command to create a file. I'm going to call this, um, I think I'll just call it uh, record.txt. So this uh, particular text file could be maybe something in a database to keep track like a like a record of something it could be a record of like when someone has checked into work or something one of those time cards or I mean it could be a file that holds people's names and addresses and whatever that sort of stuff but right now since we've just created it the file is blank so how do we add text to it um, you might think this is kind of a difficult task, but there's actually some really great utilities built into the command line that let you modify text files in a very user-friendly way. So there are a few different editors that you can use. My favorite is to use, uh, and I think it's the easiest to understand, is the nano editor. So N-A-N-O, that's the command, and then you just type whatever uh, text file you want to modify. So when you do this, it will open up a whole new window, which can be kind of intimidating, but don't worry, uh, it's, it's not that bad. Uh, this is basically just a text editor. It's the same as Microsoft Word or Text Edit or Notepad. I mean, you can't change the font size or do things like making stuff bold. That's the kind of thing that you could do in Microsoft Word that you can't do in Nano. But this is just about adding basic plain text to a file that you can then read later. So let's suppose this is some kind of database entry and so I'm going to say uh, maybe it has a name field and a favorite color field and I don't know a number of other fields. Obviously this is just an example. But you see how I was able to just type in that text in a pretty you know normal way and that's how you add text to the file using the nano text editor. It doesn't get more simple than that. Now the only thing that you might not understand about this window is all these commands down here. And they're a little intimidating to look at at first, but um, all you need to know is this little mountain top that comes before every letter is called a caret, and what that represents is the control key. So to execute any of those l little uh, options or commands that you want to do inside of Nano, um, you just push control and then whatever uh, that letter that you want to use, you just do it that way. So I'm just going to be exiting. I'm not doing anything fancy, but in order to exit, you need to know that you need to press control X. So I'm going to do that right now, and then it will say, do you want to save modified buffer? This is basically just do you want to save the file? So if you answer no, then your changes will be forgotten, but if you answer yes, then it'll go ahead and save it. So you just push Y or N, I'll push Y, and then it asks for the file name to write. Usually this is probably just the one that you opened in the first place. So then you push Enter, and there you go. You've modified your text file. So that's how you write to a text file, that's how you can modify it, but how do we read it? How do we retrieve this information that we just uh, stored in the file? Well, sort of the simplest way, though it's not the most practical, is to use Nano for the same thing. I mean, when you open a document in Microsoft Word or in Notepad, uh, it's got, it, it saves all the text that was in that file and shows it to you when you open it. So Nano works the same way. So if we do the same command again, nano record.txt, uh, and by the way, your text files do not have to have this extension. They could have any extension, like it could even be .mp3 or .mov or anything. Uh, any any file can have text in it. The whole deal with extensions has kind of been uh, sort of added on by computer systems and 
uh, the computer now recognizes that .jpg is a picture file, but at the base level, a .jpg is just a really weird looking text file. But don't worry about that. Let's just take a look at record.txt using nano. So you see, uh, when we open it in nano, there's there's the text that was there, and we could modify this if we want to change anything, and then uh, save it again by doing exit, save, enter. Um, and that's the basic way to read the text file. But suppose that you didn't want a command that takes over your entire terminal just to read uh, what's in a text file. Like you just want to read it, you don't need to worry about modifying it. Well, that's what the next command is for. So the next command is CAT. Uh, it's short for concatenate because it can be used to uh, read a lot of different text files at the same, you know, one after the other, and that's what concatenating means it's like joining together but for now we'll just use it to read one text file so you type cat and then the name of your text file so this very simply just outputs everything in the text file so it's very convenient if you just want to have a quick look at what a text file is uh, and you get everything in the text file and there are some options that you can use for this so for instance one of uh, the most useful in my opinion is to do cat and then with the n flag um, and this will output line numbers next to every line so this is very useful when you're using uh, the command line to write and debug code because often your compiler will tell you there's an error on line 53 but by using uh, the n flag you can see exactly which line is 53 so I have a couple other folders on my desktop let's do the color output for fun um, mostly this shapes.cpp, I'm not sure why it's red actually, it shouldn't be, but it's just a plain text file. So let me show you, we can open it in nano if we wanted. So it has all this stuff, and we could change any of this if we needed to, you know, put anything in, uh, but we don't. So <laughs> this is just one way of reading the file. Um, so what I wanted to show you, I'm not going to save changes, is that if we use cat to uh, export um, sorry, to read this file, it's going to be just a little bit too big. We can't see the whole file in our window. Now, if you're using terminal, then you can use the scroll bar to scroll up, and the problem is it's not really a problem. But sometimes you're in an environment where you do not have a scroll bar like that, like you're in a command line that takes up the whole screen and there's no, uh, there's no scroll bar. So that's where the next command that I'm going to show you comes in. And so this is the less command, L-E-S-S. -S. And so it's somewhat like cat and somewhat like nano. Um, and I think it's best described by just, you know, showing you what it does. So let's do less shapes.cpp. So what this does is it will take over your whole screen again. So you can't uh, type commands anymore. Uh, which is kind of scary, I guess, but don't worry. Uh, the nice thing about less is you see it only shows us the top of the file right now, but then we can scroll down using the arrow keys to, um, you know, look at the rest of the file. And you can also scroll back up when you're using less. So this is very useful if you just want to peruse some documents or something like that. The only thing that you really need to know about less is that to get out of it, all you do is push Q. That's something that I didn't know for a while, so I kind of didn't want to use less because it took over the whole window. But as long as you know you just have to push Q to get out of it, it's really no big deal. And so you can do this with any text file you want, and you can read as much of it or as little as little of it as you want. Uh, let me just show you using the N flag again for something useful like shapes.cpp. So you see now it will tell us uh, the number of each line, so if it told us we were missing a semicolon on line 18, we would know just where to look. So that is is the basics of how you can modify, uh, read, and write text files. There's a little bit more to it, um, but this is all you need to know if, if you need to uh, work with text files using the command line. So I'll talk a little bit more about other stuff you can do in a later video. But for now, that'll be it for today. So thank you for watching, and I hope this uh, tutorial has helped you. Um, leave a comment if you have any questions, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.